Hello everyone, my name is Chris Brian Barker and welcome to my tutorial on implementing a Swift backend server using Perfect on Heroku. For those of you who don't know much about the existing project, the people over at perfect.org have packaged together a solution for creating and developing a backend web service using open source Swift. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate on how to install a build pack provided by the perfect.org team on a free tier Heroku instance. Now, first of all, if you head on over to perfect.org's website and you go to deployments.html, you'll see in here a list of deployment options that they've given you. Uh, one of them is the Heroku build pack, which we're going to take a look at today. There's Amazon Web Service, which I'm going to cover in a later tutorial, and also uh, installing Perfect on Ubuntu Linux via Docker. Now, first of all, we need to go follow the link to Heroku build pack. And this will take us to the GitHub page, and you can see here we've got the build pack for Heroku with the README, some of the details in there. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this URL, and also here's a link as well uh, to the build pack example, which will contain the source code for a test application and also the server application itself. But we'll come back to that later. Now I'm assuming. Uh, you haven't created a Heroku instance in this tutorial, uh, so basically what you need to do is head on over to heroku.com, uh, log in, sign up for a free tier instance, it's about a five minute job, uh, and then once you've done that, you'll need to pop on over uh, to uh, this link here, I'll put these in the notes in the video, and install, if you've not done already, the Heroku command line interface, because this is how we're going to push the build up to the Heroku instance. So once you've all signed up with Heroku and you've logged in by terminal, uh, what we'll need to do now is we've got our GitHub URL. So load terminal, we're all logged in now. Uh, I'm already pre-logged in. We're going to set up the build pack, which will create our Heroku instance for us. So I need to do Heroku create. Build pack and then the URL, and there we go. As you can see, our instance has been created. So, if I pop on over to my Heroku dashboard, give it a quick refresh, and there we go, we can see my new instance has been created. So, we can click on that. If we pop on over to settings. And scroll down and we can see, there we go, there's a Heroku domain, there's an old one, and we'll take a look and there we go, welcome to your new app. Not much there at the minute, so we're going to push something up. So what we need to do now is head back on over to uh, Perfect's GitHub page for the build pack and I'll follow that link through, which I've conveniently got open here. And as you can see here, we've got the source code for uh, an Xcode project, which contains the test app here and also the server application. So if you head back, download the zip, which I've already done, and it brings you to here. I'm going to load the Xcode project, tap tracker. Yes, I do. Bring that down a little bit. So if we take a look in here, we've got the Tap Tracker server, which is the example so, uh, example application that we're going to use, and also the server application that we're going to build and uh, push up to a newly created Heroku instance. So Tap Tracker there and the server there. Okay, so back to the web, and uh, back to our Heroku instance. So we're going to scroll up to the top and we'll go to Deploy, and we'll look at the deployment options. Deployment method, Heroku Git using Heroku Toolbelt, which we've toolbelt with the CLI you installed earlier. Okay, so the login, which we've already done. Initialize the Git repository. Okay, let's do that then. So I'm already in that page, uh, that directory. Okay. And we do git init Heroku. You know what? It's kind of easy to do that. 
Okay. That's done. Okay, now we need to deploy the application. So I'm going to do git add. Okay. Git commit. I am initial commit. Okay, excellent. And now we're going to push. Now it's in the push where the server will compile and build. It's all part of the build pack. With any luck, this should work. So far, so good. And I think we're done. Verify and deploy. Done. Fantastic. So we'll head on back over to there. File's not found, that's normal, don't worry. I'm going to do tap, tracker. And there we go, result set. This is our application returning nothing yet because we haven't anything persisted in the database on there. But fantastic, we're up and running. Swift server is there. So, next step now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the test application, calling this URL. So, I'm going to take a copy of that. And then we'll make some changes to our, uh, our application. Push that back up to our Heroku instance and we'll see the changes we've made. So not that. There we go, Xcode. And let's have a look. So if we're going to this is the test application the tap track. So we're going to view controller. We can see here there's a current endpoint, and the minute it's talking to localhost for testing purposes, but we're not going to talk to that. We're now going to talk to our server. It's a very basic application that the guys over at Perfect.org have created. Uh, all it does is uh, logs your, I think it logs your uh, GPS location with the server and then returns it back for to do a, in order to do a, a look up on uh, up on a, a map kit. So let's just take a look. Let's run this. Uh, what have I got open? I don't know. Success. Oh, come on. Much better. Success. Let's run this. And tap on the button. There we go. Manhattan. That's what it thinks I am because of where I'm set up for next code. Okay, and we'll go back. And then we're going to take a look at the server. We should get a result back. And there we go. Latitude, longitude, time, result set. Fantastic. We've logged out location with the server. Great. So now we've got that up and running. We're going to make a change to the code in the, the server application code. Push that back up and we're going to see the changes happen. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make some changes to the test application. Uh, basically what I've done is I've added a text box in there, somewhere to enter your name. We're going to pass that over to the uh, the uh, server application. It's going to store that in the DB, and then it's going to come back in the request, and then we're going to be able to show it on the on the screen in the test application. So a quick overview of what I've done. As you can see, I've added the text field. Uh, if we scroll down here in the post body, the query string, I've added the name, pull it in from the text field. Also on uh, on the on the results back as well. Uh, if you do just doing a get, uh, we now bring back the name from the results dictionary. As you can see there, store it in a uh, store it in a variable which we use here again in the segue to pass over to the map view controller. And then on the map view controller, we add it to the uh, view annotation. So we'll have a look at the uh, Swift file now on the application server, or on the server application, should I say. And all I've done here is I've uh, changed the database uh, to create a, uh, a brand new database, because the first time we ran this, it would have created one with only uh, latitude, longitude, and time. Obviously, now I've added uh, the name, so what I've done is I've just got it to create another database just to save time. 
Uh, this is now tap tracker DB with name, whereas previously it would have just been tap tracker DB in the example. Uh, we now pull the name from the select query. Uh, insert there, we now insert the name. Uh, there we go, name coming from uh, the uh, the request from the post. And there's just some more places here. Basically, what I've done is I've just hooked onto the existing example, just adding the name field in. We're going to store that and we're going to bring it back, and then we're going to be able to going to be able to show that. Another file that I've changed is the tap tracker mustache file. Uh, this is where the data is passed to return back. Uh, to the application, uh, calling the uh, the server application, and as you can see there, I've added name in as well, so that will be passed out and brought back. So we're going to commit that now and push that up. So add, push, should just going to commit first. Now I'm going to do a push, and this should build. That's better. And that's all done. So we grab the URL. We've already got it actually. As you can see, nothing comes back because we created the new database, so there's no results set. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to launch the test application again. This is my name. Yes. Tap. Give it a moment. So if I remember correctly, this on one of the first requests, it takes a minute for the uh, Heroku instance just to wake up. There we go. I've just messed around with the auto layout a little bit. And we'll tap on there. Chris, as you can see, that's coming back from the server. So what we can do, just to double check, I could easily just pass that across in the segue, but as you saw, passed it across to the server logged in the DB and brought it back. We can just manipulate that a little bit as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually make some changes in the server application itself so we know that the data being sent back to the test application has actually come from the server. So I'm just going to make a quick change here. And what we'll do is just this. And that's here. Okay, that should do. We'll send that up. Commit and push. Okay, that's all done now. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run the application. Type name, this, I'll put B, so I know it's different from last time. Okay, we push over to the map view. And there we go, Chris B was here. So there we have it. The changes now made on the uh, server application are now being sent back to the test application. Right, and that's about it from me. So uh, thanks very much for listening. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I'll be probably taking a look at uh, Perfect Running on AWS next, so look out for a video in the future on that. And I'll also be expanding on some more server applications with Swift, uh, probably on Heroku as well. So thanks very much for listening, and see you all soon. Bye.